So let's get started with our discussion. We talk about Redox very frequently. I want you to be looking for these keywords throughout the presentation. Um, this is in a very simple way explaining how redox signaling molecules work in our bodies. And it goes something like this. Redox signaling molecules are high energy, tiny molecules. Because these high energy molecules are so tiny, they can be absorbed directly into the cell. Once they're absorbed, they act like an on off switch, donating their energy to turn off on a switch. That begins the cell signaling process. Once a cell signals to the cells around it, those cells signal to the cells around them, beginning what we call the cascade or domino effect. And it's this cascade or domino effect that contributes to our resilience to stress and overall wellness. I do that really quickly up front so that you can have the keywords in mind as we go through the presentation. Please look out for these keywords as we continue our discussion. But first, what is an electron? An electron is an extremely small negatively charged particle. These are orbiting around the nucleus of an atom or around a molecule near the speed of light. There's a ton of energy associated with these electrons. And redox chemistry specifically has to do with the concept of electron transfer. And what I mean by that is an electron is transferred from one atomic or molecular species to another. It isn't shared, it is transferred. And when we talk about the, the transfer of electrons, we mean in a very real way, the transfer of energy. So if redox is the transfer of electrons and electrons contain energy, then redox in a very real way is simply the transfer of energy. Now, many of you have probably seen this analogy because in Budapest, we went over this. Um, we all know intuitively that a ball perched on top of the hill, when I give it a nudge or push it, it rolls down the hill. We know this intuitively. We've seen it in our lives. Things roll downhill. My question is always then, well, why does the ball roll down the hill? And the answer almost without fail is, well, gravity is pulling the ball down the hill. And that's correct. But then my follow-up question is often, why does gravity pull the ball down the hill rather than push the ball up the hill? What is it special about gravity that's pulling the ball down the hill? What does the ball possess at the top of the hill that it no longer possesses at the bottom of the hill? And the answer is potential energy. The ball at the top of the hill has energy stored in the form of gravitational potential energy. But when given a push, the ball spontaneously releases its energy by rolling down the hill. This brings back the concept, looking for a place to rest. There is a law in physics called entropy. And it's the concept that everything in this universe is looking for the lowest energy level, looking for a place to rest. And much like the ball rolling down the hill, electrons are very much the same. Electrons are looking for a place to rest. And this is what makes life possible. Everything on this planet is alive today because electrons have an ability to transfer while looking for a place to rest. And if we remember, the transfer of electrons is redox. So if you don't have the transfer of electrons or redox, you do not have life on this planet as we know it. Now we've got back to this, this concept of redox as a contraction of two words, reduction and oxidation. Uh, for those of you who speak English, in English we use the term oil rig. Oxidation is lose, reduction is gain, oil rig. Now what that means is when an atom is oxidized, or undergoes oxidation, it is losing an electron. When an atom is reduced, it is gaining an electron. So there's an electron transfer that happens. You see that on the image there. The question I'll often ask during this discussion is, why is the electron transferring? And then I will suggest that people go back to the ball rolling down the hill as an example. Why did the ball roll down the hill? The ball rolled down the hill to release its energy and find a resting state. 
much like the ball, the electron transfers to find a resting state or a lower energy state. Now in thermodynamics, um, we know that energy cannot be created or destroyed. And so if the electron possesses energy before it transfers, and then it transfers and no longer possesses that energy, what happens to that energy? If we cannot create or destroy energy, that means that energy must have been released or transferred to its surroundings. In the case of redox signaling molecules in the cell, if this molecule has been absorbed by the cell, that electron transfers, that energy is released and donated to the cell. This is the concept that we use to manufacture our redox signaling molecules. We start with a low energy sodium chloride, ultra pure sodium chloride. We dissolve that in an ultra pure water to create a low energy saline. Now, much like your cell phone requires battery or electrical energy to send a signal, your cells need energy in order to signal and communicate. This is central to maintaining your health and wellness. This is central to life as we know it on this planet. But we see on the graph here that when we have sodium chloride or salt dissolved in water, we have a compound that is really low in its energy. We know we need energy in order to create cell signaling. So we use our proprietary and patented process to put energy back into the system. We push the ball back up the hill, so to speak, not to the same hill of sodium chloride, but to the hill of signaling molecules. We introduce energy into the system to put the ball onto a higher hill so that when absorbed by your cells, it can release its energy and donate that energy to the cell. Now, when we talk about energy in the terms of redox or redox chemistry, we refer to energy as redox potential. Many of you who have been with the company for a long time will know that we have a slogan saying, we power potential. And in a very real way, we mean we power your potential as an individual um, to build your, your sphere of influence, to build your company, to empower those around you. That is something that we intend to do. And that's a brand promise that, that we power potential in individuals. But it has a very cool secondary meaning in that in a very real way, we mean we power the potential of your cells to communicate because we're increasing the energy and donating that energy to the cell or that redox potential to the cell. Now, we're going through the keywords here, right? So these are tiny, high energy molecules. Because they are tiny, they can be absorbed into the cell. What do we mean by absorbed into the cell? Well, because these molecules are so tiny, they can pass straight through the cell membrane and into the cell. So here you have on the top, outside the cell, and then on the bottom is inside the cell. Because these molecules are so tiny, they don't need permission to enter the cell. They can pass freely through the cell membrane where they can go straight to work. Now, these tiny high energy molecules are absorbed into the cell because they are so tiny. Once absorbed, they act like an on-off switch. So what happens here is the redox signaling molecule is absorbed into the cell. Once that happens, it donates its energy, turning on cell signaling. That cell begins to signal to the cells around it. Those cells signal to the cells around them, beginning what we call the cascader domino effect. And you'll be able to see here in the image that cascader domino effect spreads throughout the entire, entire cellular network of the body. And so that's the cascade or domino effect. It's this concept where once a cell begins to signal, it signals to the cells around it. Those cells signal to the cells around them. And that's how the message or those signals, that communication, that cellular communication happens throughout the body through the cascade or domino effect. And it's this cascade or domino effect, right? Tiny molecules are absorbed. They act like an on-off switch. That on-off switch begins the cascade or domino effect. And that cascade or domino effect contributes to our resilience to stress 
and overall wellness. I generally pause here because this is a very important concept, this concept of resilience to stress. If you look at any research on PubMed or any of the most recent journal publications in health, they are pointing to uh, stress and inflammation as precursors to a plethora or a wide range of health challenges with severe consequences. Your body's ability to respond to stress is one of the most important attributes that you have to maintain your health and wellness. I'm gonna say that one more time because I believe it's incredibly important. Your body's ability to respond to stress is one of the most important attributes you have to maintaining your health and wellness. 